right. Hello, Manlets. So I noticed a bunch of you are crying on Twitter while looking at your favorite charts for your favorite coins. And I figured it might be more productive to actually build stuff and maybe specifically these charts instead of just, you know, being a masochist. And really all you need for this is the cursor IDE, which I have pulled up here, the English language and perhaps some Zins. Yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of go through how I would do it. And I'm just gonna raw dog this, not gonna edit anything, just to show you the entire process because, you know, you do run into quite a few errors and random hiccups that the AI hallucinates sometimes. So just gonna kind of show you the process of maybe how you could approach this. So I've already set up a React app here. You can see this folder structure. And all you need to do now is press Command L and bring up this little AI chat prompt. And then basically we're just gonna tell it what we want it to do. So we're gonna say, hello, sir. I would like to update my current React app to show the price of Solana in real time in a professional, sleek looking trading chart interface. Please generate the code for this or else my head will grow hair. Thanks. All right, so we're just gonna tell it that and it's going to go ahead and read the code base and then give us necessary files. And so what we're gonna do here is, oh, actually I forgot to uninstall some packages from last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall some packages first, clear, and then install these new ones. So, okay, we install those. We're going to update app.js now and Let's hope we can do it in a reasonable time frame here. All right, so it generated the file for us. We're gonna go ahead and accept that. We're going to apply to the CSS as well. Save that. And then let's add it to the index.js file as well. It did not change anything. Okay, so right away it says it will fetch the price every minute. Every minute is too long. We want five seconds max, but ensure you don't run into rate limits. So we're gonna go ahead and say that it's designed the app to be too slow for us. And so we're going to update that code. All right, so let's apply this, accept. And all right, it seems like that should be it. Pretty skeptical, but let's see what we get here. NPM start. All right. Seems like there's probably an error already. Yep, we are seeing nothing. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, so we just went to the console and we're gonna go ahead and paste the error that we got. It's not rendering, it errors out with these messages fix it. Nate's here. All right, it seems to think it knows why it's happening. I doubt that actually, but let's let's go with my main Claude here and see if he can figure it out. All right, accept and all right. So, okay. So it's doing this. Let's actually restart. Seems like we are getting some other errors from CoinGecko, which is where we would get the price. And not only is it rate limiting us, it's also giving us bad messages. So I'm getting the following errors. Can we use something else other than CoinGecko for this? Let's see if it can do that. Okay, so it wants us to go to some crypto compare place and sign up for an API key. Okay, let's, let's just go with what it says. So get your free API key. Okay, let's get this. Type in your email, let's sign up first. Let's do Google login. And get your free key. Okay, Google login, please. Let's do it with my Helios account. 
continue. All right, do not notify me, please. All right, so let's create an API key. We just want to be able to read data. Okay, first test. So let's add this. Uh, no thanks. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this API key that it gave us. And let's apply here. So accept and let's install these, which I thought we already installed. Let's update the CSS. Yep. And then let's find this bad boy. Crypto compare. Where is that key? All right, so let's just put this key here. This is actually horrible practice. You definitely don't want to do this in, <laughs> in practice. You'd want to put it in environment variable. But okay, so let's see. That was quick. Let's see if we're able to do this now. NPM start. All right. All right. So now we have some, some prices. Uh, I'm not sure where it's getting this from exactly. I think it either made up the data or is getting, okay. So it's actually getting the last 60 minutes. So it's showing us the chart for the past hour, which makes sense. And I don't like the way it looks. It looks a little, little amateur. Okay, so now it's working, but the UI is too simple. I want it to, I want it to be showing, or I want it to be streaming the price in real time, and also include green, red candles for price changes, just like a professional trading chart view. All right, so let's see what this gives us. All right, so let's install the trading view widget, which is not going to do because God hates me. We're going to go ahead and say, now I'm getting this error. Okay. I'm getting this error while installing the widget. And let's see what it does. Okay, so it actually wants to give me a new library altogether. So sure, we'll, we'll try that. Uh, so it's React Financial Charts in D3, which is a beast of a library, but whatever. Let's update the app.js file here. Let's save that. And let's update the app.css. All right. And okay, it actually overwrote my API key, which is annoying. So we'll just copy this. All right, so let's clear this and restart the server. Okay, so it is, okay. So we get another error, yay. Now I'm getting this error. Please fix, sad face. Okay, so let's see if it fixes this. Nope, it actually totally gave up on us. Let's try it again, making some progress. All right, so it finished the changes, let's apply them. Let's accept this. And it seems like there's still the same error actually. And of course, it forgot my API key again. And let's go here. Let's replace it back. Make sure to use this API key. Let's actually just tell it that so that it keeps remembering it but while we do that. Actually, we'll just, we'll just wait for it to generate. And all right, let's click apply. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're still gonna get an error here, but let's just see. Yep. Okay, so we're going to say, oops, we're gonna actually just copy the error on the UI here. And we're gonna say, now I'm getting this error, please fix. Okay, so let's pray to Jesus here that it actually fix it for good this time. This is a pretty common theme. It'll generally crap out and you'll have to tell it that it's doing it wrong until it basically iterates through its, let's say, solution space. And okay, so it seems like that actually resolved it. So let's do NPM start again. And okay, I mean, we have something here. Let's actually get rid of 
So these are actually warnings. We don't need them. And I want to see if it's actually updating the chart. It does not seem like it's actually updating the chart. So what we're going to do is two things. Now it compiles, but I have other issues. Issue one, the chart CSS is weird. It is in the bottom right of the screen. Ensure the UI is rendered properly and looks sexier. Issue two, I'm not sure if the price is updating in real time. Fetch the new price every two seconds. Well, let's say every three seconds. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply the changes that it's giving us. It is a little spotty, I believe. I'm not sure how much I've aped this API today, but let's wait for it to finish. Okay, so it finished. Let's apply this. And it actually didn't change much, but okay. So let's apply it to the CSS instead. And all right, so let's try this again. NPM start. Okay, so there's something seriously wrong with the way it's doing this. I believe it is actually showing the price. Yes. And so now we just need to make sure it behaves properly. So the chart view is very wonky. I don't want the user to be able to modify the zoom. I want it to look better with a cyber punk theme and centered in the middle of the screen. I also want the price to be shown in a header above the chart. All right, let's do this. All right, so it is updating the code for us. I'm trying to keep this under 20 minutes, so it seems to be at 17 right now. Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, apply. Let's see what it applied. Seems like it is disabling Zoom. Okay, so that's accept ex expected. And then let's add a better app.css here. Okay. All right. So let's restart the server. Let's actually close this and go back to cursor and then click npm start. Okay. So it is really not <laughs> understanding how to do this. So we're going to get a little feisty here. Okay. The UI is completely broken ensure the layout is properly rendered on a MacBook laptop, change the charting library if necessary. It is still currently showing up on the right while the price shows up on the left. Actually, I wonder if you can give it an image I think you probably can, but we're just going to try to keep this simple. Fix it now or Steve Jobs will come for you. Okay, so it, it's going to change the charting library here to do trading view, which seems like a better chart uh, name at least. So then we'll apply the app.js. We will save this 
and then we will add the new CSS. And basically it seems to have just removed a bunch of stuff. All right, so let's try this. NPM start. All right, here we go. Let's ensure that the price is actually updating in real time. So it's 127.50 right now. And let's see if it updates more. All right, so it is updating in real time. So it's at 127.58 right now. And it's going to change in three seconds. Yep, 127.60. Uh, and then we'd have to write some code to fix this as well. Uh, there you go. You basically can now create your own trading views. You can also expand this to add like a little transaction view at the bottom. But let's leave that as an exercise to the reader. So thank you for listening. And that's it.